Hello, City of Rancho Cucamonga. My name is Zach Neighbors, and I'm the Building Inspection Supervisor for the Building and Safety Department. My name is Nicole Dalton, and I'm the Community Affairs Coordinator for the City Manager's Office. And we would like to welcome you to another exciting episode of RC Hot Topics. This series was designed to share with you all of the great things that are happening in Rancho Cucamonga. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, my name is Marianne Herarte and I'm a Sheriff Service Specialist with the Rancho Cucamonga Police Department and I'm a certified uh, passenger safety technician which means I am certified to install car seats. Okay, so today we're going to be installing this car seat which is going to be forward facing. Forward facing car seats are for children that are two years and above and meet the guidelines of the weight and height of the seat. The child that is here today is two years old, so that's why she's going from a rear-facing car seat to a forward-facing car seat. Okay, so what we're gonna do is pull the seat belt out enough so we can get it into the, the belt path. It's gonna go through the back of the seat. So I'm just gonna push it against just to make sure it's all the way against the seat. And then we're gonna pull out the extra webbing to lock it up and then See, it's barely moving. Okay. So now, like I said, it's going to be above her shoulders, like our seat belt fits us, because she's forward facing and now. These need to be on the shoulders, yes. right? So you want it across the chest at armpit level. Okay. So this and then good. this needs to be tight enough to where I can't even grab this webbing. So too much. It's too no, much. it's perfect. It's good. Okay. It's perfect. And then you're going to adjust these after. Okay. And then she is, she's ready. So she's safe and ready. She's safe. To go. So now that we have installed the car seat and the parent is aware of all the guidelines, um, just a few things I want to mention. Um, car seats do expire from the date of manufacture and that is on the car seat itself when you purchase it. They usually expire six years after the date of manufacture and that's only because they're made of plastic and hardware and after time they do not serve their purpose after being in the hot cars, especially here in Southern California. And also, if parents are involved in a crash, whether it's a fender bender and they can still drive off, we recommend that they replace the car seat because it could have damages that we don't see. So if you would like me to help you install your car seat, um, I can be reached at 909-774-2989. And I'm here Tuesday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it's by appointment only. For more information on car seats and car seat safety, you can go to our website at rcpolice.org and click on the car seat link. Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Ramos. I'm the Emergency Management Coordinator with the Rancho Cucamonga Fire Protection District. Wildfires are one of the top hazards here in Rancho Cucamonga. Due to this, wildfires can result in devastating loss of life and millions of dollars in damage to property and infrastructure. Over the last few years, our local utility provider, Southern California Edison, created and implemented the Public Safety Power Shutoff Program, also known as PSPS. This program can temporarily shut down power during critical fire weather events in order to reduce the likelihood that their infrastructure could cause or contribute to a wildfire. The combination of dry vegetation, extremely hot temperatures, and high winds, often referred to as Santa Ana winds, can uproot trees, blow branches onto power lines, or create sparks if power lines contact one another. These sparks and downed power lines can create a potential fire incident that could turn into a catastrophic wildfire with the right weather conditions. Therefore, a PSPS can be initiated to decrease the chance of a wildfire occurring due to Southern California Edison's infrastructure. Although you may not live or work in a high fire threat area or a location experiencing high winds, your power may still be shut off as part of a PSPS. This can occur if your neighborhood relies on a line that runs through a community that is in a high fire threat area and experiencing critical fire weather. There are a number of ways which PSPS outage alerts can be received directly from Southern California Edison. You can go directly to the webpage at sce.com to obtain information on how to sign up for text, voice, and email alerts. 
Southern California Edison will make efforts to send out notifications of a potential PSPS up to two days in advance. With continuous updates leading to either the cancellation of the notice or shutting down of power in your community. When a power shutdown occurs and high threat conditions pass, Southern California Edison will re-energize affected lines after inspection to ensure safety. Southern California Edison does ask their customers to be prepared to endure a power outage lasting up to three to five days. Due to these concerns, we ask our Rancho Cucamonga residents to be ready RC. This means our residents will be ready to handle any disaster event that we may face. For information on how you can prepare yourself and your family, your business, and your neighbors, please visit us at our website at readyrc.org. Remember that PSPS events are temporary and meant to keep you and your community safe. Thank you and be ready RC. Hello, my name is Paige Garcia and I'm the management aide for our economic development division. Today, I would like to show you how to access information on our housing rehabilitation program on our housing services webpage. Let's take a look. Once on the city webpage, www.cityofrc.us, type in housing in the search bar. Then click on housing services. This page contains information on rental housing assistance, senior rental housing assistance, and programs and services. Under programs and services, click on the housing rehabilitation program tab. You will find there is very helpful information provided here. To break it down, we have three different funding options available. The first is the emergency repair program. This program provides a grant up to $5,000 and can be used only in the case of an emergency. Our Minor Home Repair Program provides a grant up to $15,000 and can be combined with the Housing Rehabilitation Loan Program if applicants exceed the grant limit. This program is available to eligible applicants every five years. Lastly, our Housing Rehabilitation Loan Program provides a loan up to $15,000 that can be paid back when ownership of the property changes. Before applying, read through the lead-based paint brochure here. There is a question in the application to verify that you have access to this brochure. To apply online, click on this link here. If you would rather print the application to fill it out, click on the PDF copy here. Be sure to complete the application packet by providing the checklist items seen here on the last page of your application. Please call 1-909-477-2750 or email chooserc at cityofrc.us if you have any questions about our housing services. And that was our latest episode of RC Hot Topics. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit cityofrc.us to watch all previous episodes of RC Hot Topics.